Hi, I'm Andy Summers at Trade Skills For You and in this video we're going to be looking at ring final circuit testing. Uh, the purpose of this test is to ensure that our conductors are continuous, that there's no breaks in them. Uh, this test will also show if we've got any loose connections. It will also show that the polarity of the conductors is correct and hopefully it will show if there's any faults, uh, if the ring has been uh, connected incorrectly or if there is what we call a ring within a ring as can be seen uh, on the diagram on the screen now. So here is the ring circuit that we're going to test today and you'll see that we have two legs coming out of the consumer unit first leg going to the first socket the sockets are connected and then unlike a radial there is a return leg coming back to the consumer unit and also for the purpose of this test we've added a spur. Now ring final testing is a dead test so we have isolated the supply, we've done a safe isolation and we've locked off the main switch to the consumer unit uh, so we're nice and safe when it comes to doing our testing. For the purpose of this video we've just got the one circuit connected in and here are our line conductors for the ring circuit number three hopefully in circuit number three we have our neutrals which we do there we go and our cpcs in circuit number three so it's all nicely coordinated uh, ring testing involves removing the conductors from the consumer unit unfortunately uh, we'd be able to separate them quite easily because we can see the sheath on the twin and earth at the back here coming in because we need to separate each leg of the ring in order to do the testing. So I'm just going to remove the conductors now. So there's our line conductors, our neutrals, and our CPCs and it's important now to find the relevant neutral and line conductors so what I'll do is I'll pull them out for the purpose of this test so it uh, makes it nice and clear and now we're ready to do the three steps for this test we're going to need a low resistance ohmmeter now you can get a, a completely separate instrument to do this test uh, or you can get a new multifunction tester like we have here. And at Trade Skills for You, we use the QTEC KT63, which has several functions continuity, insulation resistance, RCD testing, and loop, earth fault loop testing. Now, the first thing to do, as we're dealing with very low resistances, we need to take into account the resistance of our test leads and we need to zero or null them out. So the first thing we're going to do is we turn on to the continuity setting and then quite simply just join our leads together and if I hold this up so you can see we just have a, a, a continuity null button here. So I'll just give that a press and it tells me that my leads are 0 0.12 ohms. Now if I press my orange test button you'll see now that the leads have been nulled out. There is an alternative way. You can just take the lead resistance and subtract it from whichever readings uh, you get on your test. Um, so now we're ready to do step one. Step one of the test is to measure the end-to-end -end resistance of the conductors. So we're going to start off with our line conductors. So I'm going to clamp on to L1, clamp onto L2. Now, let's see, let's see what we're getting. 0.13 ohms. Now the line conductor is 2.5 millimeters squared and so is the neutral conductor. So I would now expect to get the same result on my neutral conductor end-to-end -end value. 0.13. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, the regulations state that a value of 0.05 
discrepancy between the conductors is absolutely fine. Uh, but this should be exactly the same if everything is connected up. Now on a 2.5, 1.5 twin and earth cable, the end-to-end -end resistance of the CPCs should be 1.67 times higher than the end-to-end -end value of the line and the neutral conductors. So even before I press this test button, I should have an idea of what value I'm going to get. So if my end-to-end -end of my line was 0.13, 1.67 times 0.13 is about 0.2. So if I get a value of 0.2 uh, or less at uh, uh, these low readings, I'll be very happy. So let's just see, and I get 0.15. Now if I'd have got a much higher value than 0.2, it may have indicated that there'd be a loose connection somewhere in the circuit. Now these values uh, I need to be written on the certificate here. So here's my schedule of test results. I've already filled out the circuit details, ring final circuit, uh, circuit breaker to BSEN 60898. It's a type B breaker. It's on a 32 amp. Uh, the braking capacity is 6KA and the reference method is clipped direct. My conductors are 2.5 and 1.5, so in the line, neutral and CPC, end-to-end -end values, I can now write my values 0 0.13, 0 0.13 and 0 0.15. Now we're ready for step two. This is where it was important to separate the legs so that I can see quite clearly one leg um, from another. Now. The step two test is what's called the R1, RN test. So I take the line conductor of one leg and I connect it to the neutral conductor of the other leg, making a little cross connection here. And the same with the other two conductors. So the line conductor of this leg in there connected to the neutral conductor of the opposite leg. Just make sure that those connections are nice and tight. Now I'm ready to test at the sockets. With my line conductors and my neutral conductors cross-connected, I'm going to use a socket tester at the sockets to test the R1, RN value. So R1, the end-to-end -end value of the line conductor, and RN, the end-to-end -end value of the neutral conductor, as we've just written on our certificate. And the value that I should get at the socket should be R1, plus Rn divided by 4. Because we've got resistances connected in parallel, then the easiest way to work out which, what value we should get at the socket is to add up the end-to-end -end values and divide by 4. So if we take our value of R1, which was 0.13, and our value of Rn, which was 0.13, add them together gives us 0.26. Now divide 0 0.26 by 4 and what do we get? Just going to be around about 0 0.06. Now that's the value that I should get when I test at the sockets. So I come to my first socket and I put my plug tester in. I get my leads. Now I'm testing between R1 and Rn. So I'm going between line and neutral. And I need to come to my meter and press the button 0 0.06 so I'm very happy with that that's what I was expecting just try it in the next socket to it 0 0.06 so if we come across now to here this test needs to be done at every socket uh, 0 0.06 scroll across to here sometimes you get a duff socket so it's good to do it at both of the sockets 0.06 so moving along the ring hit the button again 0.06 and finally in the socket there let's come back down to the meter 0.06 now I should get if I've connected everything up right to the consumer unit the same reading at every socket on the ring if I've managed to get the line and the neutral the wrong way around, that is, if I've managed to connect the line and the neutral of the same leg, the readings would get progressively 
higher as you go through the ring. Um, in this case, they're all the same, so I know I have got it connected right now, the spur. I would be expecting this to be quite a lot higher as it's uh, an addition now, it's an extra resistance that we've added in. So let's see what the spur gives us. 0.57, let's just go to the next socket on the spur and just try and add it again. 0.56, now it's the highest value that I'm going to write on my certificate. I think it's always good to write the R1RN value on. Now uh, you can just write it on the bottom of the certificate here, so um, let's see, R1 RN equals 0.57 ohms and I'm just going to put in brackets there that it was at a spur so that anybody looking at this in the future can see why that reading may be uh, higher than R1 plus Rn divided by 4. So we've now done step 1 and step 2 of the ring final circuit testing and we've just got our final step to do now, step 3, which is going to be our R1, R2 test and this is the value that we will write on the certificate in the correct column. I'm going to need to change my connections now so if I take out my neutral conductor there and there's my CPC from the opposite leg so I'm going to bring that across now and join it with my line conductor there and this one here I'm going to take out the neutral and I'm going to get the CPC of the opposite leg of the ring and in there yeah, that's okay that's in there tight and that's how we set our connections for step three our R1 R2 and now we're going to test at the sockets between the line and the CPC now by referring to guidance note three or the on-site guide uh, we'll see now that the R1 R2 value when we measure it at the sockets should be little r1 plus little r2 that we've already put on our certificate and if you remember we had 0.13 for r1 and we had 0.15 for r2 now if we add those together 0.15 and 0.13 we get 0.28 so even before i test at the sockets now i am expecting to get a figure of 0.07 at all the uh, the sockets on the ring I will be expecting the spur uh, to be higher as we've seen in the previous test and it's the highest value of R1 R2 that I'm going to put on my certificate I'm now going to test at each socket on the ring main and the spur and on my socket now I'm going to go between R1 and on my little socket tester here it actually says that the earth pin is R2 so R1 and R2, uh, like so, and then test at each socket. Uh, 0.07. Okay, 0.07, moving our look along. Uh, slightly higher, let's just try that one again. 0.08, sometimes it's good to just check your leads are nice and tight in there. Make sure we get the same reading. So 0 0.08, 0 0.08, 0 0.07. So I'm allowed um, a 0 0.05 discrepancy there. So I'm happy with those figures. That's the one I'm expecting. Now the spur is going to be higher, and uh, 0.57. And try the other socket 0.56 very similar to the last reading that we got on the R1 RN so I'm now going to set the highest value of all those readings which was that one 0.57 and that I'm now going to put on my certificate under the R1 R2 column so on my test certificate now coming along my ring final circuit co uh, column here what 0.13 R1 0.13 for Rn and 0.15 for R2 and then in the column next to that R1 R2 the continuity 
R1, R2 reading and at the spur we got 0 0.57 and that's the figure that we put in there, the column. And that concludes our three step test of a ring main and in doing that test we have proved that the circuit is electrically sound, that the connections in the terminals are nice and secure. We've also confirmed that polarity is correct by doing R1, RN and R1, R2. If we'd have had cross polarity then the readings would have been significantly different if there were any readings at all. Well that concludes our video on ring final circuit testing. I hope it's been of some use. Uh, the values that we got during this test, not as representative as they would be in a real life situation where circuit lengths would be much longer, but the purpose of the video is really just to go through the three steps in ring final circuit testing. For more information on trade skills for you, please visit our website www.tradeskillsforyou.co.uk for all the different courses that we run. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.